Kansas State University has many high-profile success stories, from its football teams to nationally recognized agricultural programs. But did you know that K-State offers a degree in drones? Yep, it's a Bachelor of Science in Unmanned Aircraft Systems. While many of us think of drones as the latest stealth weapon for dispatching terrorists, those who make the aerial devices say they could add $82 billion to the economy once the FAA allows for their commercial use in 2015. But recent video of Hellfire missile strikes and rumors of government mm. drones spying on Americans is complicating the industry. We dispatched KCPT special correspondent Sam Zeff to K-State to investigate. Okay, let's just get this part of the story out of the way right now. Admit it. This is how you think of drones, or as people in the drone business like to call them, unmanned aerial vehicles. And even though weaponized drones get the most attention, the world is quickly finding ways to commercialize them. A guy in Australia uses drones to sell real estate. FedEx has fantasies of using a drone similar to this one to move packages. And you probably saw this. Domino's little PR stunt in the UK using a drone to deliver pizza. But the most immediate drone applications might be right here in Kansas and Missouri. We're on I-70 heading westbound just outside of Abilene and we're on our way to Salina, which is arguably the epicenter for drone research in the Midwest. For about $1,500, we'll have an aircraft that can fly and do agriculture research. And in about an hour's worth of the flying, we can fly about 800 to 1,000 acres. This is the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Lab at the K-State Salina campus, which is on the old historic Smoky Hill Air Force Base. We're getting a drone tour today from program manager Mark Blanks. Kansas State has been teaching aviation for years and was one of the first universities to get into drones. They believe the first large commercial use will be in agriculture. We can tell um, if the plant is receiving adequate nourishment, if it's receiving adequate moisture, uh, if the plant is stressed in any way due to pests or disease. In the upper left corner here we see the actual attitude of the aircraft. This looks like a traditional manned instrument, a manned airplane. Uh, this is the horizon? Yes, the green is the horizon. This also tells us the airspeed, uh, the altitude. The direction it's flying. And here's the thing that is both really cool and just a little bit scary. All of these drones can be flown with a laptop and in some cases a tablet. The pilot will plot a course on the map and then, well, look at this. The drone can be launched off the top of a car or there's a catapult that can instantly get it going 40 miles an hour. This may look like nothing more than model airplanes, but it's the cutting edge in drone technology at an airfield with a long history of pushing the envelope. Smoky Hill Air Force Base opened in 1943 and was the last training stop for bomber crews before being deployed overseas. Every new American bomber was tested in Salina. The B-29 Super Fortress flew out of here, America's first swept-wing jet bomber, the B-47, was based at Smoky Hill. Eventually, the Strategic Air Command had its first Atlas IV hardened missile silo at the base. It did have a, um, a rich early heritage of pushing the envelope in terms of jet technology, long-range bombers. Those were all cutting-edge technologies of the time. So this is just another, uh, another evolution of that. In fact, long before most of us knew the government was getting deep into using unmanned aircraft, there was drone testing in Kansas. This is the Harrington Regional Airport, and if this isn't the middle of nowhere, it's certainly in the same zip code. It was right over there about a mile downrange where the city of Harrington, along with the Kansas National Guard, was testing a drone called the CQ-10A Snow Goose. Depending on the different type of, of sensors that you might have on those uh, snow geese, that would allow you to look for stranded individuals or maybe individuals uh, that might be buried in, uh, in debris or rubble that would certainly aid first responders in locating uh, uh, severely injured uh, individuals. The Snow Goose was essentially a flying boxcar. In combat, it was used to deliver everything from water to ammo. The Kansas Guard retired the Snow Goose last year, Taffinelli says, because technology had passed it by. The Guard and K-State researchers 
saw it as a way to aid in disaster relief and as an economic engine for tiny Harrington, Kansas. Neither came to pass. The Guard has no drones and no immediate plans to acquire any. Without Guard participation, the public-private venture at the Harrington Airport fell apart. What hasn't fallen apart is how drones have become a political hellfire missile in state legislatures all over the country, including Topeka and Jefferson City. We uh, don't want to be in the business where we have, uh, where we give the government the ability to literally spy um, on farms, businesses, individuals, property owners, homes, whatever, and based on that surveillance, be able to take action against them. Republican State Representative Casey Guernsey is a farmer from Bethany, Missouri. This session, he introduced this bill in the State House that would severely restrict how government agencies could use drones in Missouri. Under the legislation, which passed the House but did not pass the Senate, police and regulators would have to obtain a search warrant to use a drone for surveillance. Under Guernsey's bill, no warrant would be needed as long as the aircraft is manned. Help me understand the difference between uh, an EPA employee and a fixed-wing aircraft with a pilot doing legitimate uh, enforcement work uh, or a drone flying over that same piece of property. Help me understand why uh, the latter is uh, so much more sinister in your view. Well, I have, would have a problem with the former as well. But the concern with drones are the fact that they have become so much cheaper. They're more readily available. Um, it, the technology has gotten so advanced, it's borderline um, unbelievable to me uh, how small these drones can be and how effective they can be in seeing through walls. And when it becomes more uh, prevalent, when it's unregulated, and um, cheaper, it's the perfect storm, as far as I'm concerned, on the part of an individual's um, uh, civil liberties and, the, and, their, and their privacy. Should we be as worried as some of our elected officials believe we should be? No, we really shouldn't. Um, number one, privacy uh, is compromised in a lot of different ways, but this technology is not gonna compromise privacy uh, if employed correctly. I mean, you would be the poorest person in the world if you deployed a fleet of these vehicles to go peer in people's windows. Sam Zeff with that report. Representative Guernsey, by the way, says he'll continue pushing his drone bill next year in Jefferson City. A similar bill in Kansas also failed to pass, but its sponsor also says it'll be back next session.